You've just completed a large scale glazing replacement project in the centre of Liverpool. How did the project come about? So basically client made contact with us with a view to change three units on what is a complex exercise because of the glasses four or fifty odd meters in the air. So it meant row closures, specialist equipment, class was 300 kg, four meters in height. So a lot of thought had to be uh, considered as to how this was going to take place. So 300 kilogram pieces of glass, 50 meters in the air, in the city center. This doesn't sound very straightforward. So what sort of provisions did you have to put in place to make sure this was done safely? So a number of things really, given the fact that the building was also a live building, um, we had to look at the right time to do it. Ideally, when is it quiet? Well, city center, you know, it's not a very uh, quiet place. So it was half past four on a Sunday morning. Um, what we needed to do based on it being a city center and needing the crane, it needed a full road closure. Um, we also had to consider obviously pedestrian access. So there was um, walkways had to be closed and uh, pedestrians diverted, but it was more the specialist equipment that was required. So we had to use the likes of a um, mobile tower crane, a lorry mounted cherry picker, and then use the expertise of uh, fixers to carry out the works. So when I think about this, you have a 300 kilogram piece of glass that's 50 meters in the air. What happens if something goes wrong? I'm thinking here because you're working at such heights, something, a material dropping from, from height. How, how do you prevent that? Or what, what safety measures do you have in place in those types of situations? So first of all, obviously it starts with the road closure. There's exclusion zones around the area. So anything was to drop, it would drop um, and it wouldn't impact on anyone because of the uh, exclusion zone. But we have additional safety features in place with regards to glass suckers. So the sucker would actually adhere to the glass and take the weight and utilizing the crane takes the weight of the glass. So the, you know, a lot of the measures were, well, all measures were in place. So there were a number of parties involved. Can you describe the key parties involved in this project and also how you went through the selection process for each of these people? So it starts off with arranging surveys. So whether it's the crane company, an access company, traffic management, they would all have to come to site. We'd have to meet with them, carry out a survey, identify what equipment is needed, the correct equipment, um, and then put all the necessary lifting plans, risk assessments, method statements all in place to be able to carry out the work. Thinking about Dortec maintenance staff, how did you go through the selection process there? So. Obviously, we'd have to use tried and tested people that we use all the time. So we have a fixing company that has done a lot of work for Dortec over the years. They all come with high path CSCS. They've actually got um, the crane operators as well. Should should we need to use them? They've been doing the, the work for best part of 30 years and they're, they're fully trained in installing Kurt Morland. Can you talk me through the type of glazing system that you had to contend with on site? So yeah, it's a curtain wall system. So basically the glass that were that was retained in the system is retained with a pressure plate and cap, but actually this particular cap was a feature cap. So weighed a lot more than a standard cap. It given the fact that it protruded 200, uh, 200 millimeters and it was spanning four meters, there was weight. So the crane also had to lift them into, uh, had to lift them to take them out of position blowing them to the ground whilst we were able to get the glass out uh, and then vice versa. Once the new piece of glass was reinstated, the crane would then lift these caps back into place to, to retain the glass in, in place. So how long did this from start to finish take in terms of replacing one piece of glass on this job? As regards to the actual operation on the day? Or yeah. So on the actual day, you're talking for one piece of glass, the, about an hour and a half to two hours. Got you. How many pieces of glass were there? Three three pieces. What did you do once the project was finished? How, how was it handed over or signed off? So the client was there and he was obviously happy with the outcome um, as there was no issues. It was done um, efficiently and very effectively. So it, the, the sign over sign off process was all in place. Um, upon completion, the tower crane would then leave site along with the lorry mounted cherry picker. The glass that was broken was then stillaged that was also removed from site that was then returned and that will get recycled and then 
The final point is the traffic management. They would then remove all signage, barriers, and to then allow the general public to um, access the pedestrian route as well as the traffic. Fantastic. Paul, well, thank you very much for talking us through that project. So door tape maintenance doesn't just do large scale glazing replacement projects. We do an array of different products and services, such as glass replacement, window and door maintenance and repairs, and facade inspections and testing. So for all your glazing requirements, contact door tape maintenance today.